In this video, we're going to be making uh, candle holders for tea light based candles. So definitely stay tuned for that. In the meantime, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification icon for all of our newest videos. In the meantime, let's get to the build. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to figure out exactly how thick is this. This is basically going to be our baseline for the project. So this is what the majority of it's going to be made out of is out of this white wood, which is actually older in this case. So we're going to go ahead and put this right here, raise up our blade a little bit, just like that. Just make sure that we're kissing the blade and not smacking the blade and then adjust our fence to where we need to be. So I know you can't see that on camera here, but just trust me, that's what we're doing. <laughs> so we're going to lock that down and pull our piece out. And now we have the exact width we need for our inlay. So you can see this is pretty easy, pretty fast. There isn't really a lot of thinking to do. It's just a matter of just getting it done. Now we're going to take our piece of paduke that we have here and we can just run it right through the, the blade like this and we're good to go. So we'll go ahead and get that going here in just a second. All right, so now we have our uh, heavy duty inlay uh, squared up here. If you have any stickers on there, just make sure you remove them because obviously you don't want that part of the gluing process. But that's about it. So now you have your inlay piece and it's the same thickness as what your board is. And since we'll be doing different types of grain, this is less likely to crack over the years. So that's part of the reason why we cut it one direction and we put it in in the other direction. So that way they're not the same direction. So we'll go ahead and uh, start ripping down that board and then we can go ahead and glue these together. All right, so we went ahead and set up the saw so you can split this pretty much perfectly down the middle. Uh, if you ever, ever haven't ever done that, basically it should look something like this. You'll notice that uh, on here there's a spot here so the blade kerf can be identified easily. So generally it's going to be about an eighth roughly of an inch for most saw blades. Um, we are using a ripping blade on here. So that's what we're going to be using to go and cut through this. We're going to go through this really fast and uh, get the show rocking. Okay, so now we have our two pieces of alder cut in half. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is just take our piece of baduk that we measured out earlier, stick that in here, and then boom, we have a little uh, paduk alder sandwich. Sandwich, if you may. <laughs> But yeah, so this is basically pretty much how this works. Um, this is a really, really simple inlay technique that, uh, you know, any beginner can easily do uh, as long as you got a little table saw to work with. Um, no special tools here on this one. So um, I'm going to go and get a splinter out of my hand and then we're going to go ahead and do the glue up. So come right back. Okay, so one of the most important parts of the project is making sure that you keep everything nice and square. So you can see we had this little extension over here uh, that went beyond the area that we're going to be making the candle holders out of. So we're just going to go ahead and chop this off, uh, which will also square off our end at the same time and uh, then give us a nice uh, pretty look. Okay, and that's it. So now we have uh, both ends of our board nice and trimmed. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and give this a quick run through the planer. You can sand it down too. That's fine if you wanna just make sure all surfaces are even. You're just gonna have a little bit of up and down in the project like this because dealing with such small pieces of wood, using calls sometimes reduces that, but overall, you're just gonna have a little bit of slippage. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and run through the planer because it's small enough and uh, then uh, on to cutting it down and getting ready to make some candles or candlelight holders. We'll go with that. All right, here we go. 
All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and plane down the board. Like I said, you could do sanding and level it out and that would work just as fine, but, uh, or just a hand planer if you have one. Uh, but in this case, we're gonna use the electric planer because, well, we have one and it's faster. So that's what we're doing. Okay, so as you can see here, we got that all uh, squared away. Took us maybe about two, three passes and the uh, board's all nice and cleaned up and is looking good. Uh, and amazingly, no real gaps in there. So uh, definitely a great glue up. Uh, that's what happens when you work with uh, wood that's already uh, properly finished and properly flattened out. So it really does make a huge difference in the final project and how much uh, work you've got to put into it. So um, next part we'll do is go ahead and start sawing this down into sections and then uh, get ready to start uh, going cutting some shapes and drilling some holes and things like that. So let's get to it. All right, so we got pretty close to our uh, target uh, thickness after we got done uh, doing a little bit of thickness planning on it and smoothing it out. Uh, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and split it in two and then we're just gonna go ahead and resaw the rest on the bandsaw. All right, so we went ahead and got this primarily done. We're gonna do one more line right here at the bottom to go ahead and get us started for the bandsaw, and then off to the bandsaw we go. Go ahead and uh, cut this down here on the bandsaw. Um, even though there's a fence here and this is set out to approximately the width a little with a little bit of give, we're still gonna be manipulating the board back and forth to uh, handle any sort of blade drift that might be happening. And if you're interested in seeing a video on that, we'll put a video up here on how to accurately bandsaw. Uh, but yeah, so we're just gonna go ahead and get this split up and then uh, a little bit more planing action and we're pretty much done. So then this will just be two separate boards ready to go. So let's get this started. All right, let's see how we did. Minimal errors. Very nice, very nice. Beautiful, beautiful. God, I love that method. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to planing. Uh, just go ahead and get these uh, smoothed down. I went ahead and drew lines on here like you're supposed to, so this way we know uh, where to plane. As you can see, we had a few little scuffs here from the uh, bandsaw blade that's gonna happen. Uh, but for the most part, these came out really good. So uh, there won't be a lot of work that we have to put into these, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started on this and uh, get this rock and rolling. All right. So we got them all planed up, ready to go, nice and smooth and uh, ready for uh, going and cutting into, making some shapes and uh, drilling some holes for some candles. So. Uh, going to make some people real happy with these, I'm sure. Okay, so now we're all set up. Uh, we went ahead and measured out our patterns on here to see if the two patterns would work with one specific size, and it turns out they do. So that means we did a good job in Photoshop. Uh, ultimately, uh, we're good to go. So I went ahead and set up a uh, stop block over here and got this aligned with the saw. So basically, we're going to be cutting off this way. And then this will be a nice repeatable cut for all the boards. And then we'll have all of our blanks ready to go for the next phase of the operation, which of course is cutting them down into uh, stars and hearts and things of that nature. So it'll be kind of fun. So let's go and get started on that. All right. So now we have our uh, blocks cut out. We're just gonna cut the second board and then we'll be on to shaping these and making them look how we want them to look. But uh, as you can see, if you get a decent sized board and you measure it out right, almost no real waste. So not bad, not bad. Not sure why that snapped. Might be a little worried about that, but ultimately I think we're good to go. So we're gonna get this last board cut and then um, off to shaping. Okay, so basically what we're gonna do since we're doing mass processing of these, is we're just gonna use uh, double-sided uh, woodworker's tape, which you can pick off from Amazon. If you don't have any, I'll put a little link down in the description just for fun. 
Um, if you're using an oily wood like Paduk, uh, make sure that you are bracing the tape across the non-oily wood on both sides. And the reason being is, is that the oily wood might make the tape pull up. I don't know, I've never had it happen, but I've heard rumors. So we hear rumors and woodworking a lot of times we kind of pay attention because there doesn't tend to be a lot of facts behind that. As you can see, this is pretty much just that kind of an operation. Then we'll go back through and rip off all the labels uh, right before we level these out. Okay, so after adding a little bit of extra tape on there, we got ourselves a nice little block. But we still have to get our pattern onto that block. So we're going to use on here actually as multi-purpose adhesive, also known as adhesive spray. So we're just going to go ahead and flip over our... Uh, Little guy here. This is gonna be our guy that's gonna be our star. We're only gonna do four of these at a time because the reason, honestly, I'm kind of a little worried about blade drift. Bandsaws are really well tuned up, probably wouldn't, but honestly, when you've spent this much time prepping wood, the last thing you want to deal with is blade drift just screwing it all up. So that, and we really don't have time for remakes on this. So this either works or it doesn't. So it's one of those things. All right, so pretty simple. Just uh, put down a little piece of uh, paper like we have here. All right, cool. We're just gonna let that hang out here for a few minutes and then we can apply it to the board. I think you have to wait like 20 minutes or 10 minutes or something like that. 10 seconds to 15 minutes, so there's quite a range on there. Uh, but basically we wanna wait for it to get a little tacky. Then we can very carefully apply it to the boards. The main thing about this stuff is that once you apply it, you're done. There's no going back. There's no oops. You're just done. So you may want to make a couple of marks on the boards uh, just to indicate where center is, especially if you're doing something like we are where we're doing a star. You definitely want to know where that center is so that way you can kind of keep it aligned with the actual uh, inlay that you're doing on here. So maybe like right about mm, here-ish, you know, kind of a thing just so that way you have a nice stripe down the middle. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and let that set up here for a minute, and I'm going to go ahead and put a little dot on that like I was just telling you guys to do, and then uh, we'll go ahead and get to applying and cutting. So our star is all ready to go. <clears throat> Got our deal here. I'm going to go ahead and move this actually out of the way because that's got sticky stuff on it. I don't know if you guys can see this, but right here, maybe kind of, sort of, uh, there's a little tiny dot, and that little tiny dot's where the top of the star has to go. So that's basically our goal. Hopefully we can reach it. So here goes nothing. So I'm actually going to put the point of the star. Remember, it's the black part we're cutting, not the white part. So you see me doing this, and you're like, but hey. Oh, don't worry. There we go. And you see we can kind of pop that down. And if we're a little off over here, again, not a big deal. We can always go and correct that. Uh, we're gonna have to do a little bit of sanding afterwards anyway, so it's not that big of an issue. But now we have our basic layout. So all we have to do now is go ahead and get the uh, star over to the bandsaw, cut it out, and then we'll be uh, ready to rock and roll for sanding and then cutting out the little hole uh, for this little guy. And that's gonna look pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get to cutting. I'm sure it's gonna look awesome. All right, here we go. So as you'll notice on here, we actually have a three TPI uh, blade on here. And reason being is we're gonna be doing all sorts of weird cuts. And most of these are just straight line cuts for the most part. So there's no real reason to switch into a fancy or 14 TPI blade or something like that because we're not doing micro fine cuts here. We're just doing straight, pull out, straight, pull out, straight, pull out, straight, pull out, and then pretty much just repeating that all the way around. Once we're done with that, then we'll have a star, then we're good to go. So this should be pretty easy, one would hope. Final last words, as they say. All right, let's do this. And there we go. Some stars ready to be sanded, 
which actually looks like it did a pretty good job. And maybe not as much over here, but the rest of this all looks pretty good. So it's not gonna be a ton of sanding except for this one spot. And then we can uh, go right on to uh, drilling holes, finishing and pretty fast from this point. So it's gonna look awesome. Uh, doing these, if you get a little bit of this, uh, don't feel bad. Uh, that's actually quite normal and everybody gets that. So you just got to sand that down. That's really about it as far as the heart shape goes. So we're gonna go sand these down and then we'll move on to the next steps. Okay, so now we're down to the drill press component here. Um, I've rigged up a uh, shop vac to try to take care of some of this. Uh, we did a sample one here a minute ago and uh, I'll just say it was pretty messy, but you kind of expect that. But since it's Paduke, it's not really great to breathe in. So there you go. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and uh, drill out, core this out. Um, on this specific bit, which we actually we got from Rockler, uh, basically if you go down to right about here, just a little bit shy of the black line on theirs, it's pretty much a perfect cut. So that works out pretty well. So we're gonna go ahead and get this done. Okay, and there we are. Uh, one star ready to uh, deploy. We'll go ahead and uh, get a candle here and uh, test that out and make sure that it stays uh, below the surface. Uh, the only thing that's really uh, above the surface is a candle, which that's fine. But that basically gets the job done. So now we can go ahead and move on to all the rest. Okay, so this part for the hearts, because the reason they're a little bit more complicated because of all the different zones that are in here, we can't just set up a fence for it. We're gonna go ahead and cut this pattern out here on the bandsaw and uh, try to get as close to these lines as possible and then clean it up a little bit. You could also use this for routing too. So if you wanted to kind of run a flush trim uh, bit around it, you could do that too. I probably, I can see that you may have problems is right in this area here, but uh, other than that, uh, yeah, you could pretty much do that too. But the primary purpose of this is just to make sure that we have a good template to go and put on top of the heart. So there you go, let's get to it. Okay, so after you get done going and cutting out your pattern and smoothing off the edges so that way it has a good profile to it, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and get it right about here, which is center. And then with our punch, we're just gonna go like that. And now we've got a nice little spot here for a Foster bit to go into. Now we just have to measure the center on the rest of these and pretty much good to go. Okay, so we went ahead and got our uh, pattern all squared away here with the hole punch. Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, do the drill press with this. Um, basically we have a, a little spot here for that to jump right into. So we're just gonna go ahead and line this up. Now of course we have a sacrificial board under here to number one, keep it nice and smooth. And number two, quite frankly, to keep from any blowouts, that way we're nice and smooth on the bottom. So go ahead and get to that here real quick. All right, and there we go. One uh, heart template ready to go, all nice and balanced out. And uh, probably just still give a little bit of sanding on the back just for smoothness purposes, but overall that's pretty much done. Okay, so our next part that we're gonna be doing is getting these guys set up uh, for drilling now. I went ahead and did a test on this one here. Uh, and as you can see, we got just far enough down here that the candle is gonna be okay. Um, but we also went ahead and put a little dot here using a punch or an awl, whatever you want to call it. And that's just so that we basically we're roughly center. Just remember with these kinds of projects, they don't have to be 100% perfect. So I cannot stress that enough. Be as close as you can be though to perfect, but you don't need to be perfect. So anyway, uh, this works pretty simple. Basically, we're just going to go ahead and line up our Fosner bit, which always has those little things on there. And just feel free to kind of crush it down a little bit. 
And what this will do is this will leave an indention in there so this way you have a tracking mark to come back to uh, when you go to put it down. Let's say you have to walk away for a minute or something like that. Then you can just come right back to it and you got this nice big dent in the wood that's going to allow you to go and do what you need to do. So in the meantime, just going to go ahead and uh, carve out a few more of these and uh, get this rock and rolling because, well, we got a few to go. Beautiful. All right, so you're all done and it comes out looking like that. Nice and easy. And especially if you're doing a bunch of these like that, like I said, make that template. Trust me, you'll thank me later. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and knock the rest of these out and uh, then we'll go ahead and uh, get on to uh, final sanding and finishing. So that's pretty much all that's left. Nice. Okay, last part. So we're gonna go ahead and spray out these hearts and everything. Uh, we've already put a little uh, shellac on them to give them a little bit extra anti-bleed protection. We'll see how that truly goes. Sometimes that works really well, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but yeah, so we got that going on there. Um, yeah, so basically we're just going to spray them out. Uh, you don't have to go this fancy with it. You could just honestly do a coat of shellac. That would probably be fine. They're not really going to get into water or anything. So shellac would be perfectly fine. But if you're like us, you like to lacquer everything, uh, we're going to go for a little bit more of a gloss. Uh, so that way the candles have a neat reflection off from the actual hearts themselves. And this will be the same thing we're going to do on the stars too. So, um, yeah, if you've seen the process once, you don't need to see it 12 times. So I'm not going to bore you to death with that. Uh, but ultimately, yeah, this pretty basically will be pretty much the deal right here. I'm just going to spray these down, get a good coat on them, and uh, then go ahead and do any corrections we need to do on them. And then here in a few minutes, you'll be seeing the results. But in the meantime, Let's get to spring. All right, thank you so much for uh, joining us for the little uh, candle inlay video that we did here with these neat little cutouts. Um, this one, definitely the easier of the two to make by far. Uh, a lot less sanding, a lot easier to kind of keep everything in there. As long as you pretty much stay on your line, you're pretty much good to go. Uh, this one, on the other hand, a lot more difficult. I mean, you're cutting a lot of curves and stuff like that. Great challenge, though, uh, for when you're learning how to do this stuff. Uh, highly suggest definitely at least attempting this one at first. Um, maybe right after the star, probably the best time. Uh, but ultimately, as you can see, came out looking really, really nice and uh, definitely very shiny as well. So that's going to look really awesome. Um, like I always say though, don't forget to uh, like, subscribe, and uh, hit that bell notification icon for all of our newest videos. In the meantime, stay safe in the shop.